This meeting is being recorded. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today to talk about the Agricultural Workforce Development Program. Um, I'll come off screen here so you can see my face. I'm Joanne Hernandez, the Program Manager, and with me is Sarah Miller, and she'll be leading the presentation today. Uh, I'm going to turn off my camera just to avoid any um, issues with it freezing up with the uh, camera usage. Sometimes it does that, so uh, if at the end, I'll come off of the camera, but just wanted to say hello to everybody. Thank you for taking the time to join us today, and we hope you'll learn a lot about the program and you'll be able to move forward with applying. So yeah, if you want to take it from there, Sarah, I'll go to the next slide. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we do have Spanish interpretation today. If there are any bilingual speakers who would prefer to listen to this presentation in Spanish, that is an option. Um, so today we're talking about Ag Workforce Development. Um, this is the agenda. We're going to go over the program rules and the requirements, um, the application process, how to apply as a business, and the intern application. We'll go over the schedule, um, any resources, and then we will open it up for any questions. All right, so the Ag Workforce Development Program, um, the program period is from January 1st, 2025 through December 31st, 2025. And we have $300,000 available for businesses for the 2025 program year. And the program provides financial incentives to farms, ranches, agricultural businesses to hire interns and provide them with hands-on training um, through quality internship opportunities needed to begin a career in agriculture. All right, so we'll get into the rules and requirements. Um, this is a reimbursement grant. Um, so the internship opportunity requirements, uh, there should be an educational focus preparing interns for a career um, in one or more occupational fields. Um, and that we have a list over here out to the side that includes agribusiness, animal husband, husbandry, crop production, farm management, agronomy, natural resources, forestry, research and development, marketing and sales, food safety, and maintenance and repair of machinery and equipment. So like I said, this is a reimbursement grant. Um, it's up to 50% of the actual cost to the business to employ the intern, and 75% of that total reimbursement has to be paid towards intern wages. There is a maximum of $5,000 reimbursement um, per award per internship, and you can submit up to three applications and have three interns annually per business. Um, you have to fill out surveys, and then you submit the reimbursement request with supporting paperwork when the internship is complete. And so the that can be a little confusing, but you have to spend $10,000 to get $5,000. Um, you can be reimbursed for certain uh, costs related to um, equipment or um, insurance cost, as well as 10% of indirect cost. Yes. Um, Oh, there's just more friends joining us. Okay. I'll just give them a second. Thank you to the new friends who have joined us. We're just going over the Ag Workforce Development Program rules and requirements. Um, we talked about the program period being from January 1st, 2025 through December 31st, 2025. Um, we talked about the areas where the internship can be focused on, and we were talking about it being a reimbursement grant, 50% of the actual cost, uh, three interns annually per business, and um, 
there has to be an application submitted for each individual internship. So let's talk about the internship opportunities. It should be a quality education experience, and it's a requirement that the intern works a minimum of 130 hours. Um, the internship can be no longer than one year in duration. You have to provide workers' compensation insurance for the intern. They cannot be a current or past employee, and they cannot be a relative of the owner um, or the business. All right, so how can you apply for funding? Applications are currently open through November 1st, 2024, and they can be found on the Ag Workforce Development webpage, and they have to be submitted by 5 p.m. on November 1st. Um, there is uh, the ability to look at the entire application before you start filling it out, and then applicants will be notified if your internship has or has not been awarded by about mid-December 2024. It's a competitive review process. And um, after that process is completed, then we'll be reaching out via email to let those who are awarded know. All right, so intern applications. After your business is selected, then your intern needs to fill out an application after you have found them and hired them to make sure that they qualify for the program. So those applications will be open in December 2024 on the Ag Workforce Development webpage right next to where the businesses found the application. So individuals interested in participating in Ag Workforce Development as an intern should contact the business first posting the internship and go through that hiring process before they fill out the application. So once the applicant has secured the position with the business, they'll complete the form and we'll verify that they qualify for the program. And an intern application is required for each internship opportunity that the business was approved for up to three in the same way that a business has to submit an application for each individual internship, each individual intern needs to submit an application as well. All right, so this is our schedule. Um, like I said, the program period is from January 1st of 2025 through December 31st of 2025. Um, we're in the application period right now. Um, that time frame is October 1st through November 1st, 2024 by 5 p.m. Then we will um, take about three weeks to review um, from November 4th to November 25th, and then the recommendations uh, that we review, we'll send those to our division director and to Commissioner Kate to get approval and see if they have any additional recommendations. And after we get, uh, after those recommendations are reviewed, um, then we'll be sending out notices um, in about mid-December. Sometimes the date isn't exactly exactly, but uh, we'll try and be on the schedule. And then after we've sent out those notices, then we'll open the internship application. And then we'll begin the grant agreement process um, in December. And so we'll be requesting paperwork, W-9s, insurance proof. Um, if you're a new vendor, if you're a new grantee, then we'll have to set up a vendor profile for you in our accounting systems. And that can take a little longer as well. And so after we get all of that paperwork and you're set up in our systems, then we'll begin um, grant agreements with our procurement department. And uh, then the internship start date will be contingent on all of those processes being completed. All right, so these are the resources. On our website, you can find facts, you can find rules. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, it'll say business applications open and the intern application, you can see it says closed right now. Um, the application is open October 1st through November 1st. Um, applicants will be notified in mid-December, and then the intern application will be open in December 2024 as well. There's a lot of other really great information on our website. Um, we're asking businesses to make sure that they're compliant before they apply, and a lot of other stuff uh, resource-wise that can be found on the website. If you need to contact us, um, the email is there as well. All right.
Does anyone have any questions for us about the Ag Workforce Development Program? And if everybody would like to see um, a walkthrough, I can share the web page just so oh, everybody yes. um, can see uh, what that looks like and um, where Absolutely. to find the resources because uh, the web page is going to be the biggest um, assistant there. So um, we can share these slides with you as well if you haven't found our web page, um, but this is the web page. Uh, that you'll want to visit to get resources, to get the application, and then once you have an intern, you could direct them here. And the application is a simple form. And Sarah, can you give me a thumbs up that the application showing? Yes, it's showing. Okay, great. So this is what the application looks like. Um, as Sarah mentioned, there is a document on the web page that will walk you through all the questions if you'd like to look at them before completing the application. So right now, this is just going to give us a preview of what that looks like. It's not going to let us go through without me filling it out. And so where to find that is if you scroll to the bottom of the web page or further down, you could see them here. So if you click on see application questions, it will list them all um, and everything that we're asking. Some of the biggest things that you'll want to make sure you're doing is if you intend to apply for more than one internship, you'll want to make sure you submit one application for each. So up to three separate applications that you'll want to complete for each internship. Um, another part that we ask about is the job description. And so there's an example here that you could link to that shows what that could look like. But this is going to be part of the review process where our reviewers are looking at the quality of the internship project, our program, or excuse me, the internship opportunity. And that job description is going to really be key for them to understand what you're offering for the internship. Um, it can, you know, be detailed. And I can actually click on this um, link here. Sarah, is it showing the document? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so basically, just, uh, just like you would post on a job posting site, you would just include the details. And it's going to really be key here, just like a brief summary. Um, duties and responsibilities is going to be a key one, because that is also going to be helpful for our reviewers to understand um, more about the opportunity. And then required skills and education. So if there's other things um, or you know, education experience that you are requiring for, you can list that in the Google form as part of the job description. So this is a helpful document to help you filling out that part and just making sure you're providing um, enough information. And uh, in a lot of situations, it's better to put more information than less information because um, there's potential we'll get a lot more applicants um, and we might not be able to award every single one. So that's where it's really important is to have a really good job description um, for our reviewers to see the, the true quality um, of that. And so hopefully this document will help you out with that piece of it. Um, and then another part that is really important is going to be, it's going to ask you further down, and that's going to be about your budget. Um, this is also another key um, thing that you're going to want to make sure that you provide enough details. So uh, you want to make sure that you're paying for the state minimum wage. Um, it has to at least be the state minimum wage. Um, some counties uh, have a different wage, so you just want to make sure you're compliant with whatever that is for your area. And um, we do ask what the hourly rate that you're paying, and it should be an hourly rate, and then just an estimate of hours per week. Um, if you're anticipating 40 and then it changes to 35, that's fine. We can work with that. Um, we're just trying to get an idea of what the big picture of the internship is looking like. Um, so with the budget, I'll go ahead and click here to our budget breakdown. Um, this one's um, a little a little lengthy, but this is kind of what we're looking for. It doesn't have to match this exactly, but really we're looking for um, how much you're planning to pay the intern and how many hours you're intending the full internship to be. If there's any admin costs that you want to include, you can do that here. Um, if you want to be reimbursed for workers' compensation during the active internship, you can list that as well. And that would be the total wages um, that you'd want to put here. Other costs, as Sarah mentioned, you can do safety training, um, whether it's workshops or gear, uniforms, that sort of stuff. And then there's also mileage reimbursement. So any other costs that you anticipate 
uh, being associated with the internship opportunity, you'll want to make sure you list it here because that's also something our reviewers will look at. And then if your application is awarded, then what we'll do is we'll take all this data that you provided in your job description, your budget example, um, that's going to be used to create, create your grant agreement. We'll touch base after you're awarded and make sure that everything is, um, you know, staying the same. If there are minor changes, we could work with that, but really we're looking at whatever you provided in the internship application to get that grant agreement set up. Um, so that's two key things that you'll want to pay attention to. And if you have, for instance, three different job types that you're going to apply for, and say you're awarded two, you want to make sure that you pay attention to what job description was awarded. Um, and if they're all three the same, that's fine. Um, but if you, you do intend to have three different types of interns, you want to just make sure that when you're awarded, if it's not all three, that you're um, paying attention to which application was awarded, because that's the job description and that's the job um, that we'll do the grant agreements with. And so everything will be pulled from the application. So hourly rate, job description, hours per week, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then if you, like Sarah mentioned as well, if there's going to be more than one intern that you're awarded for, we'll need an intern application for each of those interns. It's a Google form as well. It's pretty simple and it's just making sure that they qualify. And then also um, that we have track of who the intern is. Um, we understand that internships can um, be challenging. So if you have any changes after you're awarded with interns, we can work with you. We'll just need new intern applications for whichever interns you'll be having on site. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention those things. And yeah, I'll come back to our web, web page just to kind of show again um, the resources. This is where you'll find everything that you need. Um, there's also, you know, if you have any questions about compliance or anything like that, we just provided a few links to go to the inspection services um, form or excuse me, webpage. So if you need any other resources, we tried to provide more details for you there. So this will be the most helpful place um, that you'll you'll come to to find resources. But as Sarah mentioned, um, you know, any questions you have, you can contact us here at this email. It's cba underscore awd at state.co.us. So if you need to reach us, you can definitely do so by emailing us there. Sarah and I get both, um, both of us get those emails. So you'll catch one of us if you send it there. And I'll get that screen back up here so you can see that email if you want to write it down. It's right there for you. So yeah, we can open it up if anybody has any questions. It looks like we do have, um, let's see, are there any in the chat? It looks like there is okay. a question in the chat. Yeah. Let me go ahead and read that and okay. we can get started on tackling those answers. So the first question, there are several, is how do employers demonstrate that they are an agricultural business as defined by the grant? And I can answer that one. Yeah. We ask in the we ask in the application, and we ask them to give a description of their business, and that qualifies them. So if they're one thing that would not qualify them if they're not in the state of Colorado, they don't qualify. Um, and usually businesses are pretty open and honest about what the type of business that we're doing. So we're relying on them to provide us that information. Um, the second, do you have anything to add to that, Joanne? No, nope. no. Okay. The second question is, will there be a standardized form for the businesses to submit the internship description and plan? There is a standardized form. It is the application. Um, so all of the businesses are applying through the same application. They have the same opportunities um, to answer all of those questions related to what the business is, where they're located, who the um, supervisor will be, they have the opportunity to describe the type of work that will be that will be done, how many hours the internship will be, um, the pay rate, uh, the budget breakdown, and um, so all of that is the standardized form. Um, and then the last question is, will employers receive partial reimbursement if, for any reason, the selected intern starts? but is unable to complete the internship. And so the answer to that question is also yes. On our grant agreement, it goes into a little bit more details about the ins and outs. Um, if there's only, uh, if the intern is only able to work um, a partial internship. So at the current 
at the current moment, we have had that situation come up. And in some instances, um, businesses have had to replace an intern altogether. And so instead of reimbursing them for the partial work that that intern has done, they reimburse, they um, replace that with a totally new intern who has done work in that time frame. And we're only reimbursing one, one intern per internship. In certain special instances, um, one intern had like a personal injury and they had to resign and housing was difficult and they weren't able to continue with the business. And so we reimbursed um, that business partially for one intern. And then we are allowing them to replace that intern. And then we will reimburse for the other portion with another intern. And then in certain, in, you know, other instances, um, if a business, for example, requests, a $5,000 reimbursement grant and the intern, um, they only ended up paying $8,000. We would reimburse up to the amount that was actually paid um, to the intern. That answers the questions. Oh, there's more. Let me do a click. Two new. Okay, are the internships only for production ags or can ag associations apply? That is a great question, Marilyn. They are not just for production. Um, they are for, um, I think it's in the it's in the presentation, um, but it's anyone associated. So uh, you can have an intern that is doing accounting work. Um, you can have an intern who is doing um, machinery work. Um, you can have an intern who is doing marketing. Um, the business is for agricultural businesses. And I do believe we qualify that on the website and in the application as well. Um, the other question is, is this an ongoing program or is this the last year that it will be offered? Joanne, can you discuss the length? Yeah, Thank so you. it is an annual program and it has been um, extended through 2027. And that's when it will go up to the General Assembly to consider extending it further. So right now um, it is an annual program through 2027. Okay, there's another question. And then question. I see that Elizabeth, Elizabeth had a question too. Can applicants use match funds from another federal grant to meet the match requirements? Generally, we haven't allowed that um, in the past. So um, that would be no at this time. Great question, Elizabeth. Thank you. All right, Heather has another yeah, question. Yeah, I see your comment, Heather. Um, yeah, we, we try to be flexible. If you have an intern, as Sarah mentioned, and they're not able to complete it, we do we do try to get it to at least 130 hours to meet the internship requirement, but we do understand and have had grantees that for unforeseen circumstances, they were unable to replace the intern and they were unable to get that 130 hours. While we try to avoid that, we do understand that that could be a possibility. So we would reimburse you, as Sarah mentioned, the 50% of what you spent. Yes, we want to make it easy and we want to work with ag businesses and um, we want to support the work that's being done. But we, you know, we try and be as flexible as much as possible, realizing that things come up and it's not always possible to plan for every single thing. Farming is dynamic. It's not always so predictable. Yes, and I will share, um, let's see. On our webpage, um, there are program rules. So if you'd like to know more details about that, um, we do have a link um, that goes to those. And so um, let me double check here. And let's see. So yeah, it, it goes into more details. And is it sharing? OK. So this is a, a bigger breakdown. And these program rules, um, we're in the process of getting them updated because prior to the program getting extended last year, um, it was only allowed for internships to be no more than six months in completion. So last year that got extended through one year. So you can have an intern for up to one whole year versus the six months as it was previous. But all of the other program rules are listed in here if you have any questions. Um, about that. Um, some of these things that are uh, listed uh, must be a student or be a graduate from the secondary school, adult education, college, um, be a beginning farmer, so a farmer within the last 10 years. And these are the qualifying questions that we ask on the intern application. 
And so it all comes from the program rules. So this is where we're getting those questions for the intern application as well. So this just goes into detail um, about the program rules and you're welcome to go through that more in more detail. And should any questions come up as you review those, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Absolutely. And again, that's found here on our webpage. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's this additional information section. And it's a little tricky because when you click the program rules, it takes you to the Secretary of State webpage. Um, but if you click here on the, the most recent date, that's where it will take you to the actual document. So it's a little bit tricky. Um, and we'll see if we can get that link to go directly. But again, if you have any questions or if you get lost while um, trying to find it, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll be happy to assist you. Okay, and are there any other questions? Not seeing and you're anything. welcome to come up and see if you have any questions. You're welcome to unmute yourself and ask them as well. So feel free to do that. I just want to thank you guys for um, acknowledging the cost to employers uh, in all of this. Um, I work in, with industry directly in work-based learning, and the cost to employers is rarely recognized. So it is very encouraging to see that there's money to back that up. So thank you. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And we're, we understand the input you're doing as well. So we really appreciate, you know, businesses who are willing to, you know, support the next generation and by offering these educational experiences, because we understand you're busy and it's hard to sometimes pause and to be able to train somebody. Um, but we really appreciate the, the dedication and time that our businesses do here in Ag to, to help support the program. And we frequently hear that from businesses, you know, when they are taking the time to train their employees, it's making them better businesses. And this is this is an opportunity that benefits not just um, interns but businesses as well. And like I said, one of those business one of those benefits is is that they're really reflecting on their processes and having to sit down and explain them. They feel like makes them a better business. Did we miss any questions? Did we get them all? I think we got them all. Everybody is very appreciative for the clarification and us answering the questions. And I'm not seeing anything else coming through. Great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, like I can't stress it enough, just reach out to us. We're happy to assist. Um, one more thing I did want to mention with the applications is if you apply, make sure that you apply um, for your internship to be within the program period. Um, sometimes we'll get folks who are outside and they, they put dates that are outside of that period, which when our reviewers look at it, they may, um, you know, dock points from that. So just make sure that it's um, going to happen sometime between January 1st, 2025 and December 30. Uh, December 31st of 2025, it could be within any time frame within that period. It could be the whole year. It could be just, you know, a month or two span during the summer. Um, you could have even a staggered situation if you're going to apply for three and say you want um, your intern for three months for planting and then you want one for three months for harvest, you're welcome to do that too. As long as the dates are within the program period, you'll be, you'll be fine. So I just wanted to throw that in there before we let you go. And again, thank you all for joining, and we hope to see your application soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.